uh, you know, querying the data, we're going to be changing the data by inserting more data into the database. And we're going to use JDBC to do that. Now, this requires a little bit of SQL knowledge, but uh, you know, if you don't know it, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the syntax that you need to use in SQL to insert data into the database. So let's open up uh, MySQL Workbench real quick. And I'm going to open it here for my Launchpad because I'm using a Mac. So if you're using Windows, you'd have to go to your Start menu and, and fire up the MySQL Workbench application. So let's connect to the default connection that we had set up. It's going to ask us the password. My password that I had set up was password123. Yours may be different. So let's just hit OK, and now we're connected. So let me get rid of the previous SQL that was there. And notice that we have two databases here. We have the Employees database and we have the Sys database. So I want to make sure that I'm using the employees database for any uh, commands that I send. So we're going to use the use command and we specify the database that we want to use and that's going to be employees underscore database. That's the database that I created as part of the script uh, you know, in the previous lecture. So select that and hit uh, the execute button and now notice that uh, out of these two schemas uh, this one is bold so we know that we're using this one, okay? And notice it's saying use employees database. So now that we're effectively using this database, any commands that we run here are going to be executed against that database. So let me do a quick select star from employees, highlight this line and then hit execute. Oh, and I'm missing the correct table name. It's actually employees underscore TBL. Okay, so highlight this line and then hit the execute button and there we go. Um, we see the data. Let me close the bottom logging grid and uh, this is that data. So if I wanted to insert, for example, another record into this table, I would use uh, the insert statement and that goes like this. We have to specify insert into, and we specify the table name, employees underscore TBL. And then we can give the values that we want to put in there. So we could do values, and then we specify um, the different values. So we've got data up to Romeo, whose ID is 700. So we want to make sure we don't repeat these IDs. These are unique identifiers for every single record. So if we've got a Romeo, let's make a Juliet, and, and her ID is going to be 800. And the value for the name column is going to be Juliet. And let's just say that she works in the sales department. And her salary, we'll just say, is 5500 So this is an insert statement. I'm not going to execute this here. We're going to actually learn how to do this in Java using JDBC. But before we do that, I want to show you a variation to this statement. Here, if we give these values the way they are, 800 is going to go into the ID field. Juliet is going to go into the name field and so on in that order, but we could change the order around as well. We could do insert into employees table, and then we specify the different columns. Okay, the first column could be the ID field, the next column is going to be name, third is depth, and then salary. Okay, so we're specifying the different columns, and then we specify the values, and that those are going to be the same as we have up there. So this is a, just another variation to be aware of. So to be more specific, I'm going to be using this second um, variation to this insert statement because I, I think it gives more detail as to what these values mean and it you know tells us which uh, column is getting which value. So let's open up the Java code and everything else is going to be the same. We still have the same connection string to the employees database, right? And then uh, we connect using this driver manager. This is actually a class, and we're executing a static method on that class. If you click on this method's definition, control click, you'll see that this is static method. So it belongs to that class, and this returns a connection object. And so that's the guy right here that we're using to create a statement object. All right, And then we uh, use that statement object uh, to send a command to the database. So that's what this execute query is. Uh, so let me just paste that SQL into here. And uh, we could split this across multiple lines so that it's easier. And uh, as soon as you 
um, press enter, the SQL moves to the next line and Eclipse is smart enough to just add a plus sign uh, so that everything is handled smoothly. Now the very important thing to keep in mind here in this example is that this is not a query, okay? This is an insert statement, meaning this is a command to the database to update the data. Uh, or insert new data rather. So instead of using the execute query method, we're going to be using something called execute update. Okay? Because this is essentially updating the database. And then the SQL that we're using is already defined out here. And you'll notice that this is giving us an error. Hover your mouse onto this error and saying type mismatch cannot convert from int to result set. So if you Go to the definition of this execute update. Notice that it returns an int. And if you hover your mouse onto the method declaration, go down and it says returns either one, the row count for SQL data manipulation language, right? Um, or two for SQL statements that return nothing. So it returns these integers as a verification that the command executed successfully. So we're not getting a result set here. We're actually getting an integer. So I don't need to do anything with that integer. I'm just going to get rid of this result set completely and just execute the update method and pass in this SQL. And so since we don't have a result set, we're not going to be processing any kind of results. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this, uh, all this while loop. And um, I'm just going to say that we executed an update or executed an insert. So I'm just going to type that in this print line statement, insert statement. And we executed an insert statement. And so now when I run this code, if I hit play, I expect this Juliet to be inserted into the database. Right now, we just have up to Romeo with the ID 700. But after I run that Java program, we're going to get another record in here with Juliet. So let's hit play. And there we go. We don't see any errors. It's saying executed an insert statement. So Juliet must have made its way into the database. Now let's verify that. Let's go back to the MySQL workbench and then do a select star from employees table again. All right. Let's hit execute. And there we go. We see Juliet working in the sales department with the ID in 800. So that's working as expected. Now keep in mind that if I run this program again, right, if I run this program again, we will have an issue. And the reason for that is because when I created the employees table, I made sure that this ID column is the primary key column, meaning it cannot have duplicates and it cannot have empty you know, values. It has to have something in there and it cannot be a duplicate. So when we try to insert this again, right, uh, that's going to prevent us from doing that. So let's just run this application again just to show you what happens. Let's hit play and boom, we run into an exception and it's saying duplicate entry 800 for you know, the primary key. So I just wanted to show you just in case you run into this problem while trying to run this again, you have to be aware of what a primary key is in the database. You cannot have duplicates and you cannot have null values for the particular column. Now these are database specific concepts that I'm talking about with regards to primary keys. And you can look this up uh, yourself when you get a chance when you're done with this course and you want to learn more about databases. I encourage you to um, master this concept because these are important and you will be using them in your practical Java development career. But anyway, I want to bring up a topic that I touched upon just a few minutes ago, and that was that this execute statement returns a value, okay? And let's go back to what it returns. It's saying it either returns the row count for the data that was manipulated, so it returns the number of rows that were affected by this particular SQL statement, or it returns a zero, if nothing uh, was returned, okay, if no rows were affected. So this is inserting data, and this is affecting one row. So it's, it's going to return the value 1. Let me just verify that by, um, let's, let's assign whatever is returned here to a variable, and we'll just say rows affected, okay? And this, of course, this variable is not defined anywhere, so I'm just going to define it out here, outside of the try block, uh, and this is going to be an integer because this execute update returns an integer value, the number of rows. So that's going to be right here, int rows affected. Okay, And by default, this is going to be 0. If you recall from the earlier chapters, 
integer variables. Um, if you don't give a value, by default, they're initialized with the value of zero. But anyway, uh, once this statement executes successfully, the number of rows affected are going to make its way into this variable. And then we can actually print how many rows were affected. So I could just say rows affected, and I'll add that as part of this print statement. Uh, and we'll say rows affected. So we're appending that value to this print line statement. And then down here, let me make a more graceful handling of the exception. In this uh, exception block, I can just print out. We know that we're trying to insert something, so I could just say error while insertion. And there you go. If we hit uh, this play button, it's of course going to show error while insertion because this record already exists and you know we can't have duplicates in the primary key. If I change this to, for example, 900, and instead of Juliet, we'll just say, uh, you know, Robert, he works for sales and he's making, you know, four thousand dollars or something. Now this is not going to give an exception because the the number 900 does not exist in uh, the, the the particular column in the ID column. So this will allow us to insert successfully. So I want to show you that this rows affected is going to have the value for the number of rows that were affected, and that's essentially going to be one. So let's hit play. Yeah, it's asking us to save, so let's hit OK. And there you go. It says, executed an insert statement, rows affected, one. All right, so this was inserting data into the database. And you might be wondering, if we can insert data using SQL, we must also be able to delete that data, right? And you'd be right. In SQL, you can insert data, you can delete data, you can, you know, you've already seen the select statement to query the data, and you can also update the data. So let's go over how to delete data from the database now. So this record that I recently inserted, Robert, he works in the sales department, his ID is 900. Let's go to the database and locate where this guy is. So I could do a select star from employees underscore TBL. Let's just highlight this and hit execute. You'll see all of the records and you'll notice that the last record here is Robert. This was inserted by our Java program. If I wanted to delete this record in SQL, I would use the delete command. And that goes like this. I could do delete from, and on purpose, I'm actually leaving these lowercase and capital so that you can see that this is not case sensitive. Okay? So you can have this in capital or lowercase, whatever uh, you choose. But personally, I like to have the SQL commands be capital and uh, the elements in the database, such as the employees table, be lowercase. So let me change this to capital. So delete from employees underscore TBL. I cannot run this like this, right? I mean, legally, I should be able to, but that's not good. It's going to delete everything from the table, okay? We need to be more specific. What do we want to delete? And for that, we need a WHERE clause. And I introduced the WHERE clause to you um, a couple of lectures ago when I was going over the basics of SQL. But all it is is we just add this WHERE clause and we specify the condition. And we can say WHERE ID is equal to 800 or 900 in this case. When we were trying to delete Robert, his ID is 900. So if we highlight this statement and hit the execute, this will... Um, delete Robert from the database. Now we have logging turned off here, but let me expand this logging and you'll notice that this statement executed successfully. Delete from employees table where ID is equal to 900 and it says one row affected. Now off screen here I do have that uh, insert table script. So let me show you what happens if I delete all the employees from the database. Um, and first, let me bring up that script that we ran to prepare the database so that we can load this table again once I'm done deleting everything. So this is that script that's used to load the data into the database. And now I'm going to show you what happens if I delete everything from the employees table. Let me get rid of this where condition. And if I execute this, it's going to delete everything from the employees table. So let's hit execute. And boom, notice it says, error code, you are using safe update mode. 
and you tried to update, let's read this, you tried to update a table without a where uh, clause, okay? So it's basically warning us that, hey, you're using this safe mode feature in MySQL Workbench, and they recognize that I was trying to delete all of the data from the database table, and it has this sort of a safety lock mechanism where it's preventing us from deleting all the data. So I want to show you what happens if I was to take this and run it in our Java application. So let's go into Eclipse. And instead of this insert statement, I'm going to paste that delete right here, delete from employees table. Okay. And it works exactly the same way as the insert, right? We use the execute update method. This is going to return the number of rows that are affected. And then the only thing that we should change here is the logging. Uh, instead of saying execute an insert, we'll just say executed a delete statement, and the number of rows affected will be printed here. And then I can also say error while insertion in the exception. Uh, instead of having it error while insertion, I'll say error while deleting. Okay, so let's run this and hope for the best. Hit play, and boom, there you go. It uh, successfully executed this delete statement. You notice that the number of rows affected is eight. So it got rid of all those records that were in that table. All right. Now this MySQL workbench had the safety mechanism for, you know, preventing us from uh, deleting. Uh, but uh, in the job application, there's really no uh, safety mechanism um, because, you know, this is connecting directly to the database server this Java application using JDBC, it's connecting directly to the server and uh, you know it's, it's very powerful. This MySQL Workbench is a user-friendly tool that prevented us from deleting. Now you can turn off that uh, safe update mode if you choose, you know, look that up, how to do that. Not important to go over right now. What I want to show you is if I select star from the employees table now, let's hit the execute button. I'm highlighting the statement, let's hit execute and let me close the log down there and you'll notice that there's no data in the employees table we deleted it using this uh, java program that we wrote and you saw the use of uh, you know rows being affected eight so so far i showed you how to insert data and how to delete data from a database table in jdbc and from JDBC standpoint, it's very similar. We just have different commands in SQL. Now let's go back to the MySQL Workbench. This script, I'm just going to highlight this entire thing, and let's load that data back into the table. So highlight all of these lines and just hit Execute so that we have the data back in our table. And uh, expand the log so that you can see that at the end here, it's saying Insert into Employees. We inserted all of these values from Michael, Cassandra, Samuel, all the way down to Romeo, all of these rows were inserted, okay? And since each of these are SQL commands, it just shows one row affected, one row affected, one row affected, and so on, all the way to the end where Romeo is the last record being inserted. So one last thing that I want to show you in JDBC, let's go back uh, to the Java application. I showed you how to insert, delete, now I'm going to show you how to update data. So. Let's go back to the MySQL Workbench and do a select star from employees table. Execute that. Let's see the data. Let me close the log. Let's see the data for a second. Let's say I want to uh, give Romeo a raise. Okay, he works for the legal department. If I need to give Romeo a raise, you know, I can increase his salary by $500 or whatever. So for that, I need to update this particular record and I'd have to update the value that's in the salary column. So for that, there is a, uh, a syntax in SQL for that. You can use the update statement. And we could say update employees TBL, all right, the employees table. And then there's a keyword called set. So we could do update employees table set salary, right, this column salary and we'll just uh, give it another 500 so that would be a total of $5,900 per month or whatever and it's very important here you also need a WHERE clause okay so we need to use the WHERE clause because without the WHERE clause if I just run this the way it is right now it's going to update uh, all of the salaries 
right? Every single employee's salary will be updated with 5,900, and that's not what we want. We want to give Romeo the salary of 5,900. So we need the where clause, and we could say where ID is equal to 700. And just highlight this particular statement, hit execute, and uh, let's pull up the log so that we can see that that ran successfully. And there we go. It looks like it did run successfully. Notice it said updated employees, set salary to 5,900. And, um, you know, it worked successfully. Let's verify that that's his new salary. Do a select star from the employees table. Hit execute. Uh, let's close the log. And you'll notice that his salary is, in fact, now 5,900. So in Java, it would be the same exact deal. Instead of this uh, delete statement, we'd have this uh, you know update statement. Let me copy and paste this. And le actually, let's just bring this on one line. I could take this entire line and dump it into this string. So let's paste it right there. Now, we've already given Romeo a raise, so I'm going to change this ID to something else. So let's go back to the data and let's see, uh, Peter, he's only making 5,000, so let's give him a raise of 500. Uh, this ID is going to be 600. So let's change um, Peter's salary to 5,500, and the ID, Peter's ID is 600. And instead of saying executed delete statement, I'll just say executed an update statement. And uh, if there's an error, we could just say error while updating. Okay, hit save and hit play, and there we go. It says rows affected, one. We expect only one row to be updated. And so let's go back to the SQL Workbench. Now, if I run the uh, select statement, let's go back up here. Right now, notice Peter's salary is 5,000, but when I run this select statement again, it should be 5,500. Let's hit execute, and there we go. Peter's salary is, in fact, changed to 5,500, and we did that through uh, Java JDBC. So we covered a lot of ground in this lecture. I showed you how to uh, update, insert, delete data uh, using the JDBC API. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lecture.